We're Sarah and E.L., PhD students in Brown University's Egyptology and Assyriology department. Well, there's certainly a lot of interesting academic work happening in Near Eastern studies, the Academy is not the only place to get caught up on the coolest news items. One resource that many Assyriologists subscribe to is the Agade Listserv, compiled by Jack Sasson, the Mary Jane Worthen Professor of Judaic and Biblical Studies at Vanderbilt University. We have scoured the internet for the most exciting news stories and public scholarship related to the ancient Near East, subscribing to our favorite blogs, and following the most fascinating research we can find on Twitter. Scholarship can come to us anyway, anywhere, and anyhow. Throughout the month, EL and I will curate a selection of items for interested non-specialists, and we'll share them with you in videos like this so that you can be part of the conversation. Back in 2018, archaeologists working at Pompeii uncovered a four-wheeled ceremonial carriage and have just unveiled the discovery to the world. The chariot, found in a stable near several houses, was likely used in festivals and parades. Frozen in time due to the ash from the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 CE, Pompeii gives us often objects like this in an exceptional state of preservation. You can learn more about the chariot and other recent Pompeii discoveries from the BBC. Not to be outdone, the ancient Egyptian site of Abydos also revealed an incredible discovery last month. Dating back about 5,000 years to the time of King Narmer is a brewery consisting of eight large areas containing about 40 earthenware pots used to heat a mixture of grain and water to make beer. Abydos is one of the oldest cities in Egypt and now may be home to the world's oldest brewery. If you're a regular viewer of these videos, you may have heard us get excited about the dual language English and Arabic exhibit at the Ashmolean Museum, Owning the Past, Mesopotamia to Iraq. Though the exhibit is currently closed due to the pandemic, you can still get a glimpse of the Ashmolean. Head over to Mar Shipram for a guest post by Paul Collins of the Ashmolean's Near Ancient Near Eastern Collections to learn more about what makes this exhibit so special. In what is very good news for the field of Near Eastern studies, the Ashmolean is not alone in making accessibility a priority in their exhibit halls. Beginning in February, the Getty Museum is now offering an online look at the ancient city of Palmyra in both Arabic and English. Return to Palmyra explores the rich history of the city from its pinnacle in the 3rd century CE to its earliest modern explorers in the 18th century. The Getty Museum website is where you can find the fully online exhibit and experience the legacy of Palmyra. In even better news for the study of the ancient Near East, an anonymous donor has given the equivalent of $15 million to University College London to support the teaching and research of the history and heritage of ancient Mesopotamia. The money will build on the already existing Nahrain network, which aims to end the exclusion of researching and remembering Mid-Eastern history in Iraq. Because of this anonymous donor's generosity, the Nahrain network will be able to continue its important work for at least the next 10 years. For those of us working and learning remotely, ORAC is the gift that keeps on giving. New to the ORAC project list are the archival texts of the Assyrian Empire. Building on the Nineveh-focused State Archives of Assyria project, Neo-Assyrian archive texts give a much needed glimpse into the economic and legal history of the Assyrian power of the first millennium BCE. There is so much to explore from this period, and if you start looking right now, you might be able to finish reading by the time I get my PhD. Have you ever been reading through an ancient text, come across a divine name, and thought, who even are you? Well, there might now be just the solution. New from Eisenbrown's is A Handbook of Gods and Goddesses of the Ancient Near East from Joanna H. Stuckey and the late Douglas Frain. The handbooks provide the most complete information on any deity you might encounter from Ada to Z. To be honest, we're highlighting the latest Oxford Handbooks because it sounds timely with the potential to be fun as all hell. The Oxford Handbook of the Bible and American Popular Culture examines biblical themes and characters and their impact on lived experiences and modern cultural genres. There's bound to be information in this volume on everything from pedagogy to books and films. Now, here comes the part of the show where we remind you that studying the ancient world comes with the necessity of paying attention to the societal problems surrounding the field. YouTube comments have not yet turned us off from including this section. This past month, a study of Canadian PhDs in archaeology revealed a persistent gender gap in hiring. Women represent two-thirds of Canadian PhDs in archaeology, but only one-third of tenure-track faculty. The authors of the study found deeply ingrained issues related not only to hiring, but support for research by women as well. It is on all of us to better examine how our field perpetuates systemic issues such as this one. 
It is also worth remembering that the places we study existed not only in the past, but very much in the present, where they face new living challenges. The New York Times recently highlighted Babylon in particular. A UNESCO World Heritage Site, thanks to lobbying from Iraqi citizens, elements of Babylon are falling into disrepair. Since the Germans carried off some of the most iconic pieces of the city's walls, the biggest threats to Babylon have been human-made. You can read the profile by the NYT to learn more about how Iraqi archaeologists and the World Monuments Fund are working to preserve the important heritage site. Mars was in the news again a lot this past month, so you know what that means. It's time to highlight an article about how ancient astronomers made Mars cool first. This month, we're highlighting a piece from Greece, Is, which traces the history of observing Mars all the way back to Mesopotamia via discussion of Greek astronomers. Check out the piece for some cool schooling from the ancient masters. That's it for February's selection. Thanks again to Dr. Sasson for his work on creating this list, to the community for creating awesome things, and to you for your interest. We'll see you next month with March's most interesting items.